Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken's Training. Today's training, what we're going to do is we're going to demo out some concrete and report it two different slabs. I'll show you the job right now. This is a DIY project for me. I'm not a concrete expert by any means, uh, but I've tried to do my research to figure out the best way to go about it. And let me show you what the job is and what I'm going to do in order to do it. Okay, so here we go. The job is, well the first job is right here. So what's happening is, is that this piece of uh, concrete which is right here has lifted up. You can see that the previous people have put a patch job in here in order to prevent that tripping hazard from that lip. There used to be a tree apparently right there uh, and that one has been removed. That was what lifted that particular uh, slab of concrete. So this this one here, which is right about here, is going to be demoed out. We're going to leave as much of the brick and everything else existing around here to try to prevent that damage there, to try to keep that to a minimum. Okay, so what we want to do, let's see here, uh, let's see, <clears throat> what I've got is for tools for the job, I've brought in a um, uh, circular saw with the masonry blade there, uh, some PPE, so we've got some safety glasses there, uh, handheld sledgehammer, some gloves, I'll grab some more gloves too. Uh, there's a um, four inch grinder there with the diamond plate blade. I've got face shield with a hard hat with hearing protection, some goggles. Got a pencil there, a kneeling pad, uh, some more tools. We've got a sledgehammer, crowbar, uh, there's a pick there, some different pieces of uh, 2x4 to help leverage and so forth, leverage it out. I brought in a uh, framing square, so I, there's, there's already a pre-existing crack here. So I want to take that crack out and create a new line. So I've already penciled in a new line right there with the, and tried to make a 90 degree angle with that framing square. So that's that black line that you see right there. Um, my intention with this slab here is to go around the perimeter with the uh, circular saw uh, tool right there go around the entire perimeter leaving as much brick as possible and then and then try to demo out just this concrete here leaving as much of the brick and everything else and leaving this slab here alone because I don't want to disturb that so this is just trying to go about this in the most inexpensive way possible this is the first job let me show you the next one Okay, here's the next slab. It's this one right here. What happened was, and there's a shady spot here, so it's a little difficult to get, but you can see that it's already cracked right there and it doesn't come to a nice clean edge. So I want to get that so that it's a straight edge going straight across from here all the way to here. So that's part one. Part two, when they poured this slab, they poured it so that it was flush with that one and it came across straight. The problem is is that it's abutting a driveway on this side and that and that created a tripping hazard right here. Now I did try to grind that down, let me show you that, with just a uh, my four inch grinder. Let me show you what that looks like, zoomed in. So you can see that I tried to relieve that trip hazard as much as possible but it never came out perfect. So I'm going to try to get that so that it's just absolutely flushed out. Also, this is a uh, salt finish, so you can see the salt finish that's on this particular pad. I'm going to try to maintain that because the pad that's right next to it going that way is also a salt finish. Now, the driveway is not a salt finish. The driveway is just a standard finish. And this is the finish that I'm going to do on the other first slab that you saw. So there's two pieces of concrete that I want to address here. All right, now, before I started this project, what I did was is I just made a sketch of the the first slab and the and uh, the, well actually I'm sorry this is the first slab here and then this one over here is the second slab so then what I did was is I determined okay how many inches it's 53 inches across and then uh, or how many feet 4.4 feet and then how many feet down here 6.8 feet and then I just using a um, concrete calculator off of the internet determined that this that the one uh, the second one that you saw was going to take 0 0.32 yards of concrete 
uh, or 20, 20 60 pound bags of uh, concrete or 15 80 pound bags of concrete and then the first slab that I showed you is 36 inches across by 193 inches down same thing using a concrete calculator uh, that's going to equal 0 0.27 yards when I combine the total of the two it equals a total of 0 0.64 yards so just under three quarters of a yard so I could uh, rent a cement mixer but I decided on this job I think I'm just going to order a concrete truck I'm going to try that and see what the pricing is and do a cost comparison analysis from renting the cement mixer and getting all these bags of concrete and going in that direction so it's priced to, to be determined on that now as far as the wood goes I determined that I want to have a frame right here I need to put a I need to put a, 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 a piece of wood right there that's got to be 82 inches so I need uh, for for wood for the fr for the front forming I need at least one 82 inch 2 by 4 and then two stakes to hold that in I just allocated 12 inches of 2 by 4 stakes and then I need a screed board the biggest screed board that I need is for the for this slab right here 53 inches so I just said I need a, a 57 inch 2 by 4 and that can handle the both of them just screeding it across when I get to that point so I determined kinda like what my material list is right like that okay so there's my approach again this is just a DIY project I am not a concrete expert just trying to go about it uh, somewhat methodically and trying to determine everything that I need in order to do the job um, so that's it for my planning. Now I'm ready to start the demo. I'm going to start the demo on the on the first one that I showed you with the brick border. Is there um, rebar in the slab? I don't know until I start getting into it. I'll have to figure that out. Um, all I can do is just start the demo project and then see where it's going to take me as far as how much effort on my part it's going to take to do. But that's it. Okay. Okay, so you can see I've started the perimeter cut there, right around there, and then I went around this way, and then back again, and then I started taking out the uh, patch job there. You can see how much of a lip, oh boy, it looks to be almost well, two and a half to three inch lip there, that, that trip hazard that they were trying to overcome. That This is the section that I want to break out and then re-pour that so that it's flush with this other one. Uh, just rather than rip out the entire thing I'm just trying to replace this one this one section here because it was already an existing crack there so that's my intention and that's that's my goal okay I have two circular saws one is a POS and the other one is not a bad saw. I started this job off with my POS and I don't care what happened to it. So if you saw me acting a little rough with that particular saw, it's because I didn't care about that saw at all. And I uh, finally gave up the ghost and just passed away on me. So I uh, switched over and now I got my other one. They're both Black & Deckers. Let me show them to you. Okay, so this one here, that's the one that just gave up the ghost and died and this one here is the one that I'm going to continue the job with now I just switched over the blade okay so with the demo that I've done so far one good thing is that it's telling me how thick the concrete is looks like it's about four to five inches thick I also know that there's no steel or at least I have not encountered any steel up until this point which is a good thing um, 
and it appears as if I'm going my technique of going around the perimeter, going down with the saw, and then breaking this section, this center section out is going to work. I am going to need to reset uh, the, that edge over there, right there where it's lifted up. You can see I'm going to reset that, and probably that piece right there, that section right there too. So I'm just going to continue on with my um, cutting, cutting the perimeter out all the way around and then breaking this out. Okay, so now I can give you a heads up on what's going on. I figure here's the root cause of the problem. And it is that root right there that lifted up the slab. You can see how it still has that piece there elevated. So I'm going to cut back into the landscape about up to here. Take the root out all the way so I can take this piece here and then reset it down and then this piece here level that out a little bit so uh, everything else is uh, pretty good I was able to get this piece right here let me show you this piece right here I was able to get that up slightly by just taking some some pieces of this uh, rock that are kind of like wedged like this piece right here I just took that kind of slid underneath hit it with the hammer and um, I was able to bring that piece up so you can see how it's pretty much flush with right there right now so I was able to accomplish that and then I just went around and cleaned up all the way around the uh, the brick edge I just used a chisel, chisel and hammer to clean up that edge right there there's the uh, chisel right there and with this hammer it worked out the best and then um, so I went around there, cleaned that up, cleaned up that edge all right there, and then that took me over to this area here. Took my saw right there, and then I cut that uh, right there so I could um, bring this piece up in, in one piece and then bring this up here in a separate piece or move it over or something. Uh, but then that's when I started digging, and then that's when I saw that. So obviously that was the, the, the initial cause, the root cause of the entire problem was a root, as we suspected anyways, because there used to be a tree right there. Okay, so anyways, so that's the uh, game plan. Okay, I mixed up some some cement. I got it inside of this uh, pail right there, and it's uh, type S, just laying around. I'm letting it just sit there for a minute and cure out. Not not cure out, but but uh, what's called slate, which means just to make sure it's 100% saturated. While it's doing that, I'm raking this out, and I'm just tamping this down. Now, I think for a good base, you're supposed to have gravel and sand and a lot of other stuff. Uh, well, maybe just gravel and sand, but it's supposed to be really uh, a good drainage base is what they're looking for. This is house is in Southern California. It doesn't rain that often. This soil has lasted 37 years all the rest of this concrete is 37 years old if it wasn't for that root 
this thing would still probably be flush. So I'm not going to uh, put in any different type of soil. I'm not going to put in any gravel, any sand, nothing. All I'm going to do is tamp this down and then wet it and then that's going to be my base. Okay, here's our job for today. Uh, let's see here. Oh, there's a little bit of shade right there. That's how I ended up. I, I ended up make, making a little more cement and bringing up that one brick right there up. It was just too low. It was just bothering me. And anyways, I've tamped everything out here. I put up a couple of like kind of barricades here to prevent people from walking in this huge trip hazard area. I don't have any caution tape. And I just have my one pile of debris right, right there. that's it for today. Let me tell you, this is tiring work. I'm not even going to attempt slab number two today. I'm just doing slab number one, and I'm calling it a day. Uh, you know, if you ever get into a fight, and the guy that you're trying to fight, you ask him, hey, what do you do for a living? And the guy says, oh, I'm a mason. I work with concrete and brick and block. Don't fight that guy, because that guy is stronger than nails, because... Let me tell you, this is just back-breaking work. Look at this pile of concrete I'm, I, I had to lift up. This whole pile of concrete right here. And let me tell you, these chunks of concrete are not heavy, and everything wears on you. It's all heavy stuff. And this was just this one little slab. I mean, it wasn't like uh, this major, you know, I'm not doing a whole driveway or something like that. It's just this one little thing you know small little project but it wears out a person like me that doesn't work on it every day anyways that's it for now I'll talk to you later till next time all right so here's the uh, slab I got it uh, sectioned off here uh, I've got these ones these brick here are all secured securely fastened you can uh, walk on them and everything give you a little demonstration to show you how strong these are so, so there's no movement in any of these, those brick right there. I got the uh, the red mortar that's supposed to go in between the joints on order, so I can get the, so I can get that red mortar put in. You can see the discoloration right there from where they had the um, that extra little piece uh, going in there you know that uh, patch that they had going there you can also see it where the bucket is kinda displayed right there so I'm hoping that I can use some muriatic acid to clear that out of there so that is this is on hold until I can uh, get those items okay so here we are on this lab I can start the uh, demo on this I'm gonna get my tools out here the first thing I'm gonna do is take out that a um, little extension where the rain gutter is there so it's not in my way at all and then I'm just going to start uh, scoring the uh, concrete here and right there on that joint in order to uh, get it to work. Hi, how was your day? It was fine. I was working hard while my husband was playing with these rocks. As you can see. <laughs> I love Did it. Did you discover any lizards under the rocks? No, I found a root. No lizards. Oh, wow. No money, no stash. N no. Okay, so here I am, got it in there, it looks like it's pretty close to where I want it to be. I've cut down a couple of stakes where I can get these things in, in where I want them to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this framing square, put this up against the slab here, 
on the driveway so I can get a 90 degree or close to it angle coming out of this thing which is about like that now that I've got that that looks pretty accurate then I'm going to go ahead and anchor this down see how difficult this is going to be to put into the ground now I'm going to I just was planning on putting in two stakes so let me see if I can't get one right about here and another one over there that thing went in on. It didn't exactly go in straight down. Let's see if I can get that a little bit better. Uh, I'd like to get it a little bit straighter if I could. Let me try that again. Alright, 90 degrees. Make sure I'm in. Okay, this needs to come up like that. Alright. Now with this straight up and down, let's see here, I want this to be in as straight as I can get it, try it like that. Okay, that's going in a lot better, like that. Make sure that that's, everything is still straight. Alright. Okay, right about there. Just so that it's below that, below this level here. Now I still have to uh, get this to be uh, flush here, but I'll get that flush with my level here went before I screw that in to make sure that that's just right and everything. So before I go in that direction, let me get this up against here, get this 100% straight so I can get the correct 90 degree angle, make sure that I'm good, Okay, which is right about like that. Put that up against there, right like that. Actually, I could probably even drive in one screw right here, like that, just to get this thing kind of where I want it to be. Let me do this. Okay. Switch. All right, so I got my drill with two and a half inch nails, screws rather. I'm using screws for this. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my level, put that under there on the driveway. I'll hold that down with this hammer like that. Then I'll bring this up so it's level. I'll put a screw in there just to hold that in place. So let me get at least the screw started. Okay. Alright, now I want this to come up and be level with this right in there oh, I'm losing my light, my light shutting off on me okay, let's try that again okay 
actually I think I need to bring that screw back a little bit and bring it down rather it's too high Started. Get my level on there. Hold that. Hold this level down, at least on that side. Then I can bring this up. Okay. And let me keep playing with that. And this is gonna come up. Okay. So right there is good. Right there is straight that way. I'll get the, uh, the 90 degree angled out after I get this screw secured. That's too low. It's got to come up. See, it's not even going to work for me. Pull it out. Wow, that is hard to get those in and out. Let me get another one because I was stripping that out. Yikes. This is a little bit more work than I originally thought it was going to be, quite honestly. All right. What I want to do, I'm just going to run this screw in and out, just so that I know that it's going to work. Let me pull it out now. Alright. 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 I got it close to where I want it. Now. Get that back in there, get this over here, get this over here, bring this up to where I want it to be, get myself nice and level. Uh, I can hear the neighbor's kids screaming about something. Alright, here we go. Okay, that one worked. I'm in level. I got it flush here where I want it to be. Now, I just got to get my 90 degree angle set like this. And actually, that is in excellent condition right there. So I can go ahead and drive this next stake down. And I'm just going to put this one right about here. Try to make it nice and straight. Now, only because I don't want this to push out on me, I'm just going to put one of these temporary um, notches that I did earlier uh, when I was cutting out my thing. I'm just going to put this down here just to put a little pressure there. So when I put this on the back side, it won't really kick out, at least in theory anyways. All right, let me see if I can't slam that down. Got that. Let me turn my light back on. I'm losing my light. Okay, now that I got that, 
and I'm going to go up against that. Now I can get myself level here and then drive a screw in. It's actually pretty good right like that. I got a nice bubble just the way it is. If anything, it could go down a smidge. Right there. Perfect bubble. I'm flush out to there where I want it to be. So now I'm just going to drive a screw in right there. So I can get this thing anchored in. got a, a little bit of wiggle to it, but it's not bad. Uh, okay, one thing that I just noticed is that this stake is up just a little bit. One thing I wanted to make sure is that my stakes are, are below this level, so when I do my screed going back and forth like this, that it's not going to hit this, and this one's going to hit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my sawzall and just trim that out. that done I noticed that the form was jumping on me a little bit there it wasn't too bad but I did see it jump I'm gonna just double check my level we got a great bubble going that way I know I'm flush up against the driveway that way and now I'll check my 90 degree and actually it's excellent so it's good all the way around, so, so that's a good form. Now, and I still have to excavate some dirt in this area over here so I can get this down so I'm getting a good three and a half to four inches of concrete. Okay, one thing I did today is I called up a couple of cement companies to find out how much it was going to cost to uh, bring me a load of concrete. Now I think I only need three quarters of a yard of concrete but just in case I said you know one yard and then if I don't use the whole yard then it's not a big deal. To, uh, for, to get one yard delivery the cheapest price was $300. Uh, another guy was uh, 365 so I just went with the $300 guy. Now I did a comparison analysis if I went with uh, just going down to the Home Depot and buying bags of concrete as another option. It was only going to cost me about a hundred bucks in cement and then fifty bucks to rent the mixer. But I would have had to lug home about thirty bags of concrete at least at ninety pounds a bag. And uh, it's just a lot of work. So I was willing to pay a little bit extra plus I had never I ordered my own concrete truck before so I thought I wanted to go through the experience of doing the concrete truck as well. Um, oh another option would have been United Rentals. They have a tow behind trailer apparently you can do one yard for two hundred dollars but it's kind of a manual process so I uh, that was another option could have saved uh, uh, well one hundred dollars had I gone in that direction but again for the hundred dollars or the $150 that it's going to cost me to have the guy deliver the concrete, I just decided to go in that direction. Okay, now let's talk about the concrete that's going to be delivered. So the concrete that I ordered, this um, is a small time kind of like single truck owner operator type of a deal and he is 
uh, just basically does one type of concrete, which is, I think, well, I, I get the impression it's one type, so it's 2,500 PSI uh, is the rating on his concrete with an aggregate of 3 8 to half inch stone. Um, this is just a sidewalk. I don't think I'm going to have an issue with that concrete because there's not going to be any vehicle traffic on this. Otherwise, I might not use this particular concrete. Although he said it would be fine even for a driveway, you know, I don't have enough experience to know whether it would be or it wouldn't be because I'm just, I don't do concrete every day because I'm just a first, like a DIYer here trying to do the best I can on my project. Oh, talking about my forms, one other thing. Uh, basically, the first one that's going to be on the patio with the, with the brick ribbon around it. I don't need to use any forming because the brick ribbon is the form. On this one here, this uh, 2x4 is, is the form. I got to put some used motor oil, wipe that down on the inside so the concrete doesn't stick to that. So that'll be another step I need to take. All right, so pretty much that's it for now. And uh, I got the concrete is coming on Saturday, so that's why I'm out here working in the dark to get to get this thing prepped and ready to go because uh, I don't want there to be any problems. I need to make sure I have all my tools. I mean, I just discovered my circular saw just died on me, so I'm using my sawzall for things that some that I would be using my circular saw on. Um, all right, so anyways, uh, that's it for now. Okay, now I've got this thing screeded so that it's flush here, it's flush here, so I'm at least three and a half inches down the whole way through this whole thing. So now I'm, I'm at least three, three and a half inches down because that's how thick one of the two by four is, three and a half inches. Now, that's before compaction. Now I'm going to take my compactor here and I'm going to go through and I'm going to compact this entire slab down. So I'm going to compact this whole thing and then I'll put some water on here to try to get it to settle out overnight. Okay, now I used the compactor. Let's see how much it went down. Not too much. It's definitely dropped about a quarter of an inch in some spots, so which isn't too bad. And I still have to wet it down and let it sit overnight. So that's it for this portion right now. Okay, last night what I did was I went through and I went around and cleaned with the uh, the four inch grinder around these edges right here all the way around just to make so it wasn't a sharp 90 degree angle it was kind of like a little bit of a rounded uh, edge kind of like I was using the um, the edger uh, going this way so this way it would just produce that and I just tried to go through and clean up all the uh, stuff that was around there so let me show you that so if I had any of the polyurethane caulking anywhere around here I tried to pull that off also over here where they had the patch I used the grinder and right here where you can see where they put the patch job in and you can see the discoloration on the concrete over here let me get a close up okay right here you can kind of see you can see the color difference between this here and that there this is where they had that little patch job coming up for that three inch rise now what I'm going to do is I've got uh, some muriatic acid, which is this product, just regular pool muriatic acid. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, mix that in with some water. There's what that is right there, just muriatic acid. And I'm going to put that in this bucket of water right here and then use this brush in order to see if I can't etch that out a little bit just to get that cleaned up. So I'm going to do that right now. Get some gloves on. And put that right about there. Okay. Oh, 
in about a half a gallon or so of this stuff and let's see what that does with this just trying to get that cleaned up a little bit Okay, so anyways, the more that I look at this, the more unhappy I am with this section and this section right here. These two are too low. See how low that is? I can put my finger under there. It's, it's, I don't like that. These were the ones that I put down. I want to bring at least these two up. Maybe leave that one alone because that one's not set bad. So I'll, I'm going to do a, a cut with my grinder here bring this down in here and then do another cut uh, it's already down as far as it can go here just make sure that that's as far as it can go and then try to get this up a little bit um, this one over here needs to go down so uh, I can see that it's hitting right here when I bring my four foot level across this way like this I can see how that goes like that this one's up a little bit here, but I'm probably not going to address that one. But these other ones are up too high. I want to get those down. So I'm going to bring this earth back, try to get this set down a little bit. Plus I want this to go down as well. So I got to do a cut there. So I'm going to start working on that right now. All right, that's pretty good for these three bricks here. I got it, but it's pretty much flush with this concrete. Pull it out like this. It's a little bit pitched, but it's not too, too bad. And it's keeping in line going this way here. It's still a little bit recessed, so I can live with that. So this, I think I'm good with. Now I need to get these two up. So I'm going to work on that now. All right, so I went to the store and I picked up a couple of bricks. I got this prepped out here. The bricks that I picked up, I picked up some used bricks at the Home Depot, but they didn't look good. These bricks were sitting out back at an old walkway, and these matched pretty close, so I'm going to use these. So you can see that when I put these two in, uh, these are going below the surface here good enough so that they think they, they should be okay for me to work with for, to, to put them in to bring them up level so I got to mix up some concrete put it in here I made a little form so it wouldn't spill out so I can uh, anchor that down I've got this uh, concrete here type S so 
so I'm just going to use that. This is just spec mix type S. So I'm going to mix up some of that and put it in here. In addition to that, I also decided to go with um, putting in some um, rebar dowels like this. So this one, the hole's been drilled. I just got to put it in. This is what it's going to look like uh, after. I'll show you how long those are when I get those at the uh, at the Home Depot. So it's going in that much. I just stick it in there as much as possible and uh, do it like that. All right, so I'm going to mix up some concrete so I can get this over here fixed up. Okay, I got my concrete mixed up here, and it's pretty thick. I got it so that if you slam it down and turn it on the side, it takes a little bit of effort for it to fall off. Now, to show you what I was trying to explain before, if you take, uh, I'm just using this as my straight edge, this uh, piece of wood here, one by four, whatever. And if I hold this up, I want this brick to come up flush with that. So I know that this gap is how much concrete is going to be underneath. And that's fine. So this is how much space I have to work with. Okay, so I got this all cleaned out inside of here. I'm going to go ahead and take my concrete with my two inch margin trowel. Put it in there. Hopefully I've got enough mixed up here. Last time I did this, I was a little shy. Alright. Let's put that in here. Like so. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, wet the back of these t uh, bricks just so that they uh, are not soaking up all that moisture. Okay, so I just used the spray hose just to moisten that up a little bit and let's see if I can't get this to where I want it to be. Alright, so I'm still too shy in the front. I'm going to have to mix up some more concrete. Alright, I better do that right now. I'm still going to need some more concrete there. Okay, I mixed up a little bit more concrete, and now I'm going to put that in here. And that should be plenty now. Alright, let me take the two bricks, I'll hose them down a little bit just to get them nice and wet. All right, now see how nice and high that's riding? That's what I'm looking for. Okay. So now I can take this and I can wiggle it down to where I want it to go to get this flat. And then check my spacing this way, try to keep them all in line. Looks like this brick needs to come back a little bit, like so, this one as well, like so, and try that again. Okay, check it this way, check it this way, make sure that it's going down, alright. That is not bad. That is not bad at all, right there. Alright, all I have to do is just let that set up, and I should be okay with that. I do have a little bit of concrete that's inside here. Let me just pick that up a little bit, just so that I can get the um, a good amount of um, the uh, uh, tuck pointing material or the grout 
that goes inside between the bricks. Just make sure I have plenty of that space for that. I think I'm going to be fine just like that. They look pretty straight. There's, you know, the gapping is a little bit off. I could take this brick and shift it if I wanted to make that equal. Let's see if I can do that. Just shift that slightly to the left without disturbing anything. Okay, get that up to there. All right, right about like that is exactly the way I want it to go. I'll let that cure overnight, and that should be good to go. This is what it looks like from this angle. And just trying to get them straight as I can. I'll give you one more angle if I come over here. Let's see here. What that looks like. Going that way. It's pretty straight. It should it should work out fine. Okay, so here I'm going to show you what it's like to use the uh, hammer drill in order to uh, drill in uh, for your rebar. So here I just kind of lined up where I want my rebar to go. So right about here, halfway in the slab. This is 3 8 inch and, these are ha and this is a half inch uh, drill bit. So let me go ahead and um, plug in. And make sure I'm going the right way. Okay. Okay, everything looks good. Get my hearing protection on. I got a spray bottle of water here so I can cool the bit down if I want. Okay, so now that I've got my rebar in, 
I want to make sure that it's going to be two inches below the concrete because I don't want it to be too close to the top. Now this one here is about oh, two and a quarter or so, but this one here is about an inch and a half. So when I was drilling this one, it must have been at a slight upward angle or something. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and just kind of step on that to bring that down a little bit and then make sure that that's at least two inches below. So again, just using my tape measure, measure that out. It's about an inch and three quarter. Go a little bit more. Bend that down and get it two inches below. Because I just don't want it too close to the top. A little more. Almost there. All right, there we go, two inches, and that's two inches there. So then I'll just go around to all of them and make sure that they're all at least two inches below so that that's ready to go. Okay, today's the big day where we're going to pour our concrete uh, slabs today. The concrete truck's going to show up here in about three hours, so we just got to make sure that we're ready to go. While I'm waiting there's a few things that I, uh, I'm going to do and let me show you. So right now I basically I have all the steel ready to go. You can see the, the three steel pieces on this side and the three steel pieces on that side and I need to put some oil on this board here so this way the concrete won't stick to it and I also wanted to put some plastic down here here and along the back wall. I want to wait a little bit longer because it's still kind of cold out. This is a, a back walkway sidewalk in the back of the house, on the side actually, on the side of the house where there's two slabs, one here and one here, and there was a pretty, they had, what they had was a 2 by 4 going in here and it just rotted out. So I just took it down to the dirt level so that it's pretty, pretty clean uh, going down. Let me see if I can show that to you like that and then I put some plastic here so this way I can fill in this one and there's one over here too uh, and I just put a, uh, a 2 by 4 here at the end to keep the cement in so I'm hoping to take care of this while I've got the truck here on site as well. This slab is ready to go except for I need to put the plastic all the way around this uh, the brick over here came out nice and that's, it looks a lot better now so I'm happy that I refix I fixed that before the truck showed up. Concrete, I mean the uh, steel is in. I got two steel pieces here and two steel pieces on this side, one there and one there. So that's ready to go. So it just needs the plastic. So I'm just going to wait a little while. In the meantime, I'm going to get rid of this load of uh, the material, the old slab that came out. And this is the rest of the material over here. Load it up in the truck here so we can get it out of get it out of here. Alright the pile of concrete that was there has now been transferred to the back of the truck so one pile down one pile to go over on the front of the driveway. We now we'll get the truck in position and we'll go ahead and get rid of this pile of debris right there. Okay so now the pile that was here in the driveway is now in the truck so all we got to do is put the tailgate back on the truck so we can get rid of this debris right now. Go ahead and show the uh, all the debris in the truck. And that's it for now. Thank you. Alright, we just arrived at the dump. Here we go. You gotta go in here and get our truck weighed. So we're waiting in line for the for the scale. This is just a little picture of kind of like what things look like out here. See some piles of uh, dirt over there in the distance and I can see some bark mulch over there too you can buy stuff here and everything so we're just waiting in line here for the uh, scale looks like we're about five trucks back okay we're in the dump and we are traveling towards our destination right now to we're trying to find out where to dump this uh, concrete debris so 
I'm going to travel up here and see if these people give me directions on where they want me to dump it. So that's what we're doing right now. Okay. All right, so we just stopped and saw these guys back here. And they told me to go up here and find a concrete pile. And I'm supposed to dump into the concrete pile. So it looks like, it looks like it's going to be that one right there. I see some, uh, some, some red brick here. I think this is going to be it. So I'm going to dump into this one and hopefully I'm at the right one. Okay, so now we got the truck emptied. Go ahead and show the truck over here. And these are the tools that I use. I just use a, a hoe, a shovel, a flat square shovel, and a broom. You got to make sure you bring these tools with you when you're here so you can get your truck bed nice and clean. So now, all right, so you can see the nice clean truck bed. So here's the debris right here. And while I was here, I was just um, looking around at the buildings. Go ahead and pan over that building right there. And this building right over here, this is where the zombie apocalypse is going to begin. The, the zombies are going to come right out of that building at night with uh, bloodied up knives and stuff like that. So just be ready for them, okay? So when I'm in here at the dump, I'm kind of watching everything behind me because you never know who's going to come out behind the shadows. <laughs> All right, that's it. <laughs> All right, we've dumped off our load. Now we're going into the scale. Go ahead and show the scale. All right, so I'm gonna drive up into the scale and find out how much we owe for this, uh, for this load that was just dropped off. They took a $100 deposit from me uh, in order to, uh, to do this, so it'll be interesting to see what happens now. All right, so here's a sign of what they sell and how much it costs. So TV 100 compost, TV 200 compost, uh, let's see. All right, I gotta go out there now and see how much they're gonna charge me. Okay, so I just got done uh, with the transaction, and here's the invoice right here. It, the total was eighty-one dollars and thirty-six cents to get rid of that load, and I had to pay with either cash or personal check. So I just went with the personal check, got my hundred-dollar deposit back, and now I'm heading back to the job site. Okay, so the plastic, <clears throat> I've got this ready. So this plastic is down here, there, and here. Now, I want you to notice how on this slab here, how I have the plastic coming right to the corner, and I expect the concrete to come in direct contact with this side here. And the reason why is because that's why I doweled it. I want these two pieces to move together. If there's expansion and contraction here, I don't want to create a trip hazard by coming with different levels. I want this to move in unison. Now this is on two horizontal slabs, one next to one another. Here, you have a wall which moves differently than this right here. So I put the plastic coming down into where the cement is going to be poured. And the reason why is because I don't want the cement to stick to this wall. So my intention is to pour the slab. It's going to come up to, the, to this flush with this level here. So it's about three and a half inches down from here down. It, and then I'm going to leave the plastic in place and I'm going to finish my concrete. And then the next day I'm going to cut out the the plastic with the utility knife right here in order to uh, leave that that um, that cement from adhering to this wall so that if this wants to move it can move independently of this wall if it wants to do so so it'll it, it won't be uh, like anchored to the wall so to speak so that's why I'm doing it this specific way uh, so we're pretty much prepped here the last thing I need to do is just put some oil on that 2x4 and I'll do that in a minute. Okay, so I've got my plastic down. Let me show you what I'm doing. And, I, and by the way, I may have gone overly overboard on the plastic, but because I'm a DIYer, I don't do this for a living. This is my first kind of big job like this. And I'm trying to work neatly, so that's why I went through this extra energy of putting out the plastic. So uh, it's not sticking 100% well, so I'm just taking my foot and kind of 
running it down like this. Go ahead and zoom in over here on my foot and I'm just trying to get that to kind of stick. So I'm going to go around the perimeter like this just to try to get it to stick. I'm also going to take my tamp and give it one last tamp all the way around. So this is going to be the final tamp because the concrete truck is going to be here in about an hour. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this uh, slab one more time. Uh, and plus the other slab too. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, if you are new to concrete, you might be asking yourself, why is he tamping this this uh, area here since he's going to pour concrete over it anyways? What difference does it make? And I'm going to tell you the answer. The answer comes down to the word settling. Settling. This is what is referred to as settling cracks. What happens is if the area underneath your concrete referred to as the substrate is not a good substrate. Now preferably you would have um, gravel, some type of crushed gravel would be ideal uh, especially under a driveway or something like that. If you were going to do a permanent job, uh, this is just a small job so it's a non-permanent job, but if you were going to do a permanent job uh, and you were going to have a permit the inspector would want to see how many inches of gravel, compaction, and stuff like that before you pour your concrete, okay? And the reason why is because if you don't do proper pre preparation prior to putting the concrete and you don't give a good compaction, and then you pour your concrete and then uh, a few uh, weeks go by or months go by and you get a good rain, and then that soil underneath your concrete compacts on its own due to the weight of the concrete plus you had a rain so it kind of maybe swelled up and then shrunk down and then when it shrunk down it compacted and then uh, if it just drops an extra quarter inch half inch or whatever or it could potentially crack your concrete this is how you get settling cracks and this is how you prevent settling cracks now I'm just doing it with, with this manual hand tamper because this is such a small area. If you were going to be doing a large area you would be doing like if you're doing a driveway you'd be using a, what they refer to as a plate compactor. There's two different types of compactors. There's the one that looks like a jumping jack. You hold on to the handle like this and a piston goes up and down and it's referred to as a jumping jack compactor. For a driveway you wouldn't want to use that type of compactor. What you do is use a plate compactor where it has a vibration into the plate and it vibrates side to side and up and down and you, and you walk that uh, plate compactor all through the entire driveway compacting that driveway before you do your pour. So compaction is extremely important when it comes to pouring concrete. Okay. All right. I've got some um, uh, some motor oil here because uh, uh, I want to put some oil on this so the concrete doesn't stick to it. If I had used motor oil, I'd use it, but uh, we don't change our oil anymore here, so I don't have any used motor oil. So I just have some of this new stuff when we topped off the engine at one point in time. So I'm just going to pour it inside of here, inside of this rag, and I'm just going to oil up the uh, top and the um, sides here just so that the concrete doesn't stick to it. I'm just going to oil it up. That's all I'm doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and just do this two by four. This, If I had more wood framing I would do that but I don't have any more forming other than just this one because my job is so small. It's just a very very small job. <coughs> all right, Almost done here. Okay, we're just waiting for the cement truck to show up. I'm going to pour this one first and I got everything ready. Now uh, for gloves, I'm going to use these um, latex gloves with the with the pretty good uh, mill thickness on them. Uh, I know some cement guys they can work with bare hands but I noticed that when I work with cement with bare hands the cement uh, burns my fingers and everything, so I don't want the cement to actually touch my skin. So I've got some gloves. i got them right here next to me. In case I break a, a, a glove, I can grab another one. I have my screed here so I can screed it down as I go through, so I'm ready to go with my screed. Now, for my tools, I've got a mason trowel right here. 
I've got a finishing trowel right here. I've got an edger so I can do the edges here. And I've just got this rubber grout float thing here because like I said, I'm not an expert at this and just in case I need this to help smooth it out or something, I'll just put it right there. And this is just a two inch margin trowel. So I just got my tools right here ready to go. I've got a kneeling pad ready to go. Um, looks like I won't be able to get the whole slab from one side. Well, maybe. I could possibly uh, do it, but I can always just go over to the other side. I don't have rubber boots, so I'm not going to be actually in the concrete itself. Um, but I should be pretty much ready to go once the uh, concrete comes. We'll just start over here. The wheelbarrow will come in, dump right here, and we'll just work here backwards. So that's my intention. I'll just wear some safety glasses to make sure I get no cement splashing up into my eyes for some oddball reason. And, uh, and that's it. The sun's starting to come out, so it may cure out on us faster than I wanted to, but I'll do the best I can. Okay, so this is the wheelbarrow that I plan on using. I've had this wheelbarrow for some time now. Uh, it has one of those tires that you don't need to inflate. It's just a solid filled tire. Uh, it is not metal. It is a plastic wheelbarrow, so hopefully that will be okay. Now, the intention is, is to just come up here, come up here, and then when we dump it, we'll just dump it like this so that the wheelbarrow doesn't touch my form, and then just dump in like this, and then come over and dump like this here and so forth while we fill this up. And then when I move it around, I can move it around with the mason trowel or even with my with the square shovel if I need to move the concrete around. And that's it. One of the things he, the uh, concrete delivery person asked me was, do I want it a little bit wetter? And because I'm not a concrete expert, I just said, whatever your best recommendation is, uh, telling him that I'm, it's not like I do this for a living, so I don't have that much experience at it. So he's using his best judgment for what, uh, how wet the concrete should be for me. Now realize the wetter the concrete is, the weaker the mixture is, but it's, it, the easier it is and the more time it gives you for workability. The sun is now out and shining, so maybe a little bit of wetness isn't going to be such a bad thing for me as an inexperienced concrete finisher. What? It's going? Alright. Alright, so I'm trying to get this as flat as I can and as smooth as I can. When I do this trowel, I'm kind of lifting it in the direction that I'm going to try so it doesn't dig in. because it's just black. Otherwise it'll dig right in. Like that. So you have to do that. You have to put it at an angle. Alright, let me 
keep working down. Can you bring me that? All right, so first what I do is I do the uh, corners, trying to get myself a nice round edge here on the corners. Then what I do is I take this flat trowel and I try to just smooth it out. And I don't want those trowel marks from the uh, corner trowel in there, so I'm going to work those out like that. And there's some bleed water on here, so I have to wait for this bleed water to dissipate before I give it the next layer. But in the meantime, I'm just going to keep keep going. What's bleed water? The bleed water is the water that you that you see on the on top of the surface right here. They call that bleed water. So we naturally just let the bleed water dry out? Yeah, and it still has to go over, I still have to go over this again. Wow, now it's heavy. <laughs> Back this up so I can work here. You still filming? Yeah. All right, bring the camera over on this angle. All right, so now, Let's see, here I don't need to do the, the edging, but here I do want to do the edging. So I'm just going to get in the corner and then work it like so, and then work it back and forth. And then you see how there's a low spot? There's a low spot right there. So I, if I have to, I'll put some more concrete there. But in the meantime, I'm just going to try to get this edge nice and flat. Okay. All right, now see right there, it's turning out real, real, real low. Let's see if I can get some of this concrete here. And it looks like it's going to be low right there, so I'm going to put some more concrete there. So I, I got a little bit left over from the job. And I'm just going to put some in there. And then I'll straighten that out with this. Now I am. All right, so you see how I did that with the corner. Now I'm going to go ahead and try to smooth that out here. All right, it's rolling. All right, so now I'm going over this slab for the second time, trying to get my corners. Let me tell you, this is, finishing concrete is a lot harder than you would think. Trying to get all these voids out so that you have nice, perfectly rounded corners is just difficult with this uh, aggregate concrete, but I'm trying to, to get it with the uh, corners. Then once I get the corners done, then I take my flat finishing trowel and then I finish the um, uh, I finish the field. So that's what I'm trying to do here. It's just harder than it looks. <laughs> Okay, so this particular slab is a salt finish, so I took some salt pellets 
and I threw them in here, like just kind of sprayed about. And now that they're in here, I'm going to try to just smooth this out as best I can. And then as the salt dries, it will give me that salt finish similar to this finish over here. Hopefully. So that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, we're getting ready to wrap up the finishing portion of the job. And uh, let me tell you, some tough stuff, finishing concrete. My knees are killing me, my back is killing me. And I wanted to get experience uh, finishing out these, um, these pieces myself because I just wanted to see what it was like working with concrete like this. It's hard work, I'll tell you, it's very hard work. And finishing concrete and to get the edge that you see the professionals do is difficult because I'm seeing not smooth lines, I'm seeing, uh, diff even though I screeded it out and I was trying to be as perfect as possible, I see differences in elevation. Um, it's just, it's not exactly perfect like you see the pros do as a DIYer. This is, there's an art form to this is what I'm trying to say. Now, if you're a DIYer and you're wanting to save some bucks, what you could do is you could do the demo work, the prep work, yourself, uh, maybe a little bit more rebar than what I did, depending upon your project, and then hire a concrete contractor to actually pour and finish. Because that's when the final product is going to be shown, and that is, his talents can be uh, utilized that way, and you'll save a few bucks on the demo. That's just a thought. Um, I have no idea. I, I paid the concrete guy 280 bucks, you know, when I went down to get rid of the concrete, that cost me, what was it, 70 bucks or 80 bucks? And then I, I, I blew a few bucks on tools. So let's see, I'm into this for um, uh, 280 plus another 80. So uh, that's 360. Uh, at least, I'm probably into this for 40 bucks in tools. So let's just, let's just call it 400 bucks. So I'm into this project for $400. And then if you were to hire somebody, I really don't know because I didn't uh, price it out. But I, I mean, I personally put a lot of hours into this project myself. So I can't imagine a contractor charging less than $1,000 for what I did, $600 in labor, um, at least. Uh, but I don't know that for a fact because I didn't hire a contractor. I'm just doing it on my own. Um, all right, so let me show you how we are finishing up here. And I'll show you what, uh, what we're going on. Okay, this one here is, is all done. And I've got some uh, plastic over it with two by fours holding the plastic down. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm trying to slow down the curing process. Uh, because the slower it cures, the stronger the cement is. Okay, this here is the last one that we're on. Trying to get our edges just as pristine as possible, smoothing out the concrete one last time, and then there's a piece of plastic right over there that we can throw over this and hold it down with a couple of 2 by 4s and then put some um, caution tape up so nobody walks on it, at least overnight. So that's where we're at. We're just going to finish this off. Trying to show you how tight the... Uh, it's difficult to get these corners, even though we've got the edger there, there's the edging tool right there. Even though we've got the edger, you can see I'm working those corners right there. It is still very tough to get that and get that just right. And it actually, just looking at it through the camera, it kind of looks like there's even a, a low spot right there. Like it kind of dips in there. Even though I screeded that thing 100% all the way across. Anyways, doing the best we can here. Alright, so I'm taking some muriatic acid, I'm putting it in uh, water, and what I'm doing is I'm uh, just going through, and where we drop that in concrete, all I'm doing is just kind of trying to clean up the concrete like this. We already went through it, so this is already pretty clean. I'm just doing this for demonstration, and then just taking a garden hose, and then just rinsing it down. We just, since we just poured the concrete today, it's pretty fresh, so it's it's easy to um, to clean up. So the time to clean it up is is now. 
Um, you can go ahead and show this uh, over here so you can see we've already got this covered out. So this is all covered out. We're going to leave this now and um, let it... Uh, my intention is to leave this covered for three to four days and then um, maybe in about two days I'll wet it down, the whole slab, and then cover it again. Because the, the longer you allow the, cure, the concrete to cure, the stronger the concrete will become. So my intention now is to slow the curing process down. So that's it for now. Because I don't want anybody walking on my fresh concrete, I've got the plastic down, two by fours, and then I put some caution tape up, held up by a couple of chairs here. And over here, I've got the plastic down, and I've got a trash receptacle with the caution tape on both sides here, just to keep people off of that slab area, so I don't want anybody near it. Okay, it's the same day, and I want to pull this up, and I want to see what it looks like here. It's been a few hours, it's been about three hours <clears throat> here. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. I'll just take a broom to that and uh, let that be. All right, here we go. Let's pull this out. I think it's a lot better than before because it had before it had that uh, you know that whole the whole size of a 2x4 because they used to have a 2x4 going in like that and then it just disintegrated over the years so I just uh, I didn't let, want that big huge gap there that's why I filled it in all right so anyways that's it. Just wanted to show you. Okay, it has been one week. Uh, today is Saturday, and I uh, did the pour on a Monday. So I ripped off the plastic yesterday, which was Friday, and now I'm going to uh, show you the uh, slab. We're going to start with the salt slab first, and here it is. I still have to rip off the forms and stuff. Um, I can tell you that on this I made a grave mistake on the um, <clears throat> on the salt pellets. The salt I still have to rip that plastic up the back right there with the utility knife. I'll do that in a second. Um, so so the, the the pitch of the slab and the levelness and all that came out pretty good. My my edges came out pretty decent. Um, I might clean it up with the grinder, four inch grinder right there, just to make it a little bit better. I might just touch my edges one one time and just go around the perimeter here with the four inch grinder to get it perfect. Might as well. It's not going to take much energy to do that. The uh, The greatest issue that I had here was that I used the wrong salt pellets. I'll show you that right now. Uh, before I show you that, let me just show you. This is the look that I should have been going for. Let me zoom in on that. That's the salt finish I was trying to achieve. You see all the small like um, recesses and the number of recesses and if you compare that to my slab my pellets were way 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 too large spaced way too far apart so there's no way I'm going to achieve that look right there of that salt finish the, on my technique um, and that's because of the salt pellets. Alright here's the salt pellets that I use that I for my particular slab I don't recommend. This is how big they are right here. They're that big and they were way, way, way too big. So, um, anyways, I should have, uh, 
I should have checked my my salt bag a little bit better. Okay, so the so the salt finish was a a poor error on my part. That's due to my inexperience being a DIYer, not really knowing, doing a little bit of research. Buy uh, salt from a for a water softener. I guess there's different pellet sizes. So so maybe you can if you're doing a salt finish, you can learn from my mistakes. Um, uh, the pellets that I had were way too large and also when I was working it in I worked some of the pellets directly in and below the concrete that was a poor mistake uh, due to inexperience if you happen to be doing a salt finish you want to buy smaller pellets if you're trying to achieve that same finish I had over there and you want to only recess it so that 50 percent like the top half of the pellet it, or the salt is still showing so it produces those little ridges you don't want to completely submerge your salt in the concrete which I did on some of that so I'm not sure um, for now I'm gonna leave it and just say forget about it and just live with whatever I got there but if it becomes too big of a problem maybe I'll rip out the top one one and a half inches and then just do a pour of one and a half inches myself and, um, and uh, do it that way. So that's only if it's, I uh, for some reason can't live with it. But uh, for right now I can live with it just fine. I'll show you the other one. All right, here's the other slab. And yeah, you notice that the, the root, the problem that we had here, which was that, uh, that lip that was about a three inch lip. Obviously that's all gone. That's flushed out right there. I still have, I, I put some, wood shims in right there. I got to pull those out so I can put my grout. I got to grout in around here. Um, now let me show you that line how it fattens out right there. I might take the grinder to that. Let me show you what that looks like. Alright so when you look at it like this you'll see that there's like a wavy spot right there kind of fattened out over. Um, I'll see if I can't clean that up with the four inch grinder. I still have to go through and take out some of the plastic right here to try to clean up those edges. And then I might do the same thing, just go around the perimeter here with the four inch grinder trying to clean everything up. But I still have to pull out some plastic there with the utility knife. I'm going to start on the other slab first and then I'll come back to this one. Oh, overall though, it's not bad. The uh, finish on it is decent. I mean, uh, kind of looks scratched up here and looking in my little viewfinder here, but it uh, it does not look uh, it does not look bad uh, for you know for the concrete walkway that it is. I mean, it's just a concrete walkway. You're just walking on it. Um, but I'm gonna try to clean it up a little bit better. And I still have to. I got my colored grout so I can put that all in there. And uh, so while I have my grout mixed up, if I need to put some grout in other spots, I'll do that. So I got to do all the grinding first before I get over to this this grout thing. Pull out that wood, see how much mortar I got to put in here. All right. First, we'll see how difficult it is to get out these forms. Who knows what that's going to be like? Let me try to put this under here and rip it up. See if it'll just come up on me. Hey, all right. Not too bad. Yeah, I can live with that. Alright, here we go. There's our form taken up. Not too bad. I'll deal with that later. And I got some concrete that spilled over here. To throw all that away no big deal I'm gonna put some new sod in here anyways I expected to do that a couple strips of sod once this project is completed I'll get to the landscaping but for now that's that <coughs> <coughs> now let's take the utility knife go around and rip this plastic out as low as I can get it. <clears throat> there we go. That rips. 
crisped out nicely. Kind of has a little bit of a lip there, but you really can't notice it because it's up against here. I guess if I wanted to, I could take my grinder and go in there and clean that up a little bit. All right, I'm going to get my grinder and just uh, go around and touch all the edges right now and, uh, and do that. Let me get set up for that. All right, pretty much that's it for this slab. Here's your, try to get you a close up on the corners. Uh, that's what I was just trying to clean up there. It came out pretty good. Go around that over in this section, I'll show you in a second. Right there where it joined that, uh, the house, kind of, kind of messed up right there. Not as smooth as I want it to be, but not bad. Cleaned up that edge. You know, I just went around the perimeter of the slab. The slope of the slab is really good. It's completely flush here. If you remember in the beginning, it was all broken out right here. Now it's perfect 90 degree. And it's pitched away from the house, so all the water just rolls right down. Because it's pitched with the same uh, level as the driveway, which is perfect. Uh, the only problem, if I was to say that there is one, is I use the wrong salt uh, for this finish. So the finish is just not exactly what I was trying to achieve which is that finish right there I got a different finish it's just looks it's larger holes and uh, less of them and it's just not matching but I you know first try Alright, so there's the slab after uh, cleaning out the joints. I used a leaf blower and I, af after I did went around it with the 4 inch grinder I used a leaf blower and I cleaned up everything. And I'm pretty, 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 pretty much happy with everything and I'm, I'm probably not going to make any changes here. Uh, I might want to try to clean that up later on with a different technique but right now I'm focusing on right here where I gotta put the mortar joints all in around there and around there. So I got myself a little workbench here and I am going to use this uh, mortar mix right here, quick mortar mix, 
So I put in two scoops of that little container, that soup container there, inside of this uh, Homer bucket. And now I've got some coloring agent, which is right here. Let me turn that around so you can actually see that. All right, so that's the coloring agent I ordered from the Home Depot. It's uh, type red, which is to uh, match the um, the color that is in between down here. So down here, um, in between the uh, the existing brick, that color is more. It's got it's got a reddish tint to it, comparing it to the to the gray right slab next door to it. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try to mix up my batch here as best I can. So I've got a little bit of water inside here. Let's see if I can show you that as best I can. Okay, so I put some water. I took one of these, filled it with water, put it in there. I've got this here. I guess I should get a get a rag or something, maybe. All right. Uh, Let's go ahead and just try to puncture this. All right. Get rid of that. And I got a little measuring scoop here. And it's, this is good for two 80-pound bags. And I'm just doing two scoops of that. So it needs just the smallest, smallest amount of this. I'm just going to fill this. Uh, just basically, I'm just going to coat the bottom of it. That should be plenty. And I'm mixing this with the water. Okay, cover that back up. So if you can see that, it's got a real reddish tint to it here. It's kind of sloppy, it's good I'm doing this outside. All right, it's real, real red though. Just mixing this up. Still kind of staying on this thing, but whatever. I'm not going to worry about that. Let me just put this on the grass. All right, now I'm going to put this a little bit of this in here. Maybe you'll see it as I'm pouring. And I'm just going to use my two inch margin trowel. Still seems to have a grayish uh, color to it. It's, it's kind of hard to tell on the color. No, wait, that's definitely red. When I got it in the sunlight, you can see that it's red. In the shade, it looked, a, I couldn't quite tell, but when I brought it out here in the sunlight and I could, did a contrast, I could see it. All right. You know what, that's not too bad. I can live with that. Uh, you could just let this sit for a few minutes to let it, uh, what they call slake, which is basically take all the wet cement and just kind of get it saturated. But I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just go ahead and work on it. I got a couple of uh, tools, uh, pointing tools to point it inside. So I'll reposition the camera, point it down there, and we're going to get going here. In a All second. right, here we go. Now, the couple different ways that you could get this in here, but I think the way that I'm going to do it is I'm just going to uh, use this. Uh, trowel, the one that I use to do the concrete, I'm going to use it like a hawk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, my mortar, get a little bit on here, kind of using this like a hawk here. I'm just going to try to get this down right to where I want it to be. It's still a little wet. Try to fill it in like this. So I'm just scooping a little bit at a time, kind of getting it in there like that. It's kind of wet, but I that's not a bad thing because I didn't I didn't wet pre-wet down the brick because the bricks dry right now so it's gonna suck a lot of that moisture out. Let me go ahead and 
get this in here. Try to get something manageable that I can work with without being too sloppy. Another way that I could do this, let me show you another technique that might even work better. Since I've got this right here, what I'll do is I'll put it on like this. And then what I can do is I can put it right up against it like this and I don't have to let it fall out. This isn't. This is probably better for this uh, this deal than just trying to fill that up. in there a little bit at a time fill that up all right we're getting there slowly but surely got it exactly the way I want it. A little bit more here. Just 
kind of filling in the tops just about flat. Alright, all that does not look bad at all. Alright, let me try that. Let me see where that's going to get me. Now, i got a couple of tools here with uh, different thicknesses. So depending upon how thick the join is, will determine which one of these tools I'm going to use. Like that's a real thick joint going this way, so I won't use that one. Uh, I'll use this one right here to uh, smooth that out and to get me to where I want to be, like so. I can just keep using that same tool going all the way across. It looks a little light right there, so I'll just get a little bit of mortar. Just uh, put a small amount of water in here, fill that in. Uh, just a very small amount right there. Let me try that out. That might be enough as is. I'll just kind of scrape the excess off. I'll go over this a couple of times, trying to trying to get the uh, finish I'm looking for.
Okay. It's not too bad except for here, here, and here where it's kind of um, falling out. we got a 2x4 over here. Let me see if I can't stiffen that up a little bit. Now let's try it like this. let that stiffen up for a little bit. Oh, I gotta put some in this joint. I missed that joint right there. I just saw that. Oh boy. Let's see. That's a real small joint. That's going to be real difficult for me to fill, but I'll try. Try to smooth this out a little bit. Get that thin as a pancake, thin as a dollar bill or something, you know, just thin, thin, thin. Trying to get that in there. Tighten up that corner a little bit. There we go. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm a little light right there. Let me put a little bit right in there. This whole point right here is a little light actually. Let me just try to fill that in. Alright, that's not too bad. I'll get that cleaned up in a second. Um, I'm a little low here. Let me just add a little bit in here. Let me try that. a little bit better. Okay, now try to tighten this up right here. Thank you. 
Okay, not bad. Let me get a little bit right there. Not too bad. All right, that's pretty good. Got those two corners dressed up pretty good. That, I can't get that good no matter what I do. It's such a small joint. Let that go. right here. Build that up a little bit. Let's try that. shaping up pretty good. Everything looks pretty good except for right over here. Let me just try to put this block here just to put a little bit of something or another there and get a little bit of mortar down here. All right, so here's a close-up on how much I've gotten done so far. And I'm letting it stiff up a little bit. I just got a brush. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this brush and just try to smooth out these joints with it now that it's starting to stiffen up a little bit. Still kind of still wet. You can still see it's kind of wet here, but... I'm just trying to knock down any ridges and whatnot, trying to make it s smooth, silky smooth. Okay, so I got my brush and I was just cleaning up the joints. Um, so I got my cement brush here and I was just going through cleaning up all the, uh, the joints with it like this. 
but everything is pretty much smoothed out and everything looks pretty good. I just have to let this set up and cure and I think this will be this grouting will be fine. I tried to, it's definitely red, so it's definitely matching with the red. So I got that going for it. And that's about it. Okay, I'm getting ready to wrap up this video. So let me show you the final product of what I ended up uh, finishing out. All right, so there's my final uh, mortar joint tuck pointing, whatever you want to call it, in between the bricks in that area. I had a little bit left over of the mortar so I touched up this area here and I also went down here a little bit uh, in order to just kind of fill that gap in and it's kind of, it was kind of a thin uh, a thin deal but you know what the hell I had the stuff I might as well put it in there. So this is what the final slab is going to end up looking like. Uh, try to get that best I can on the camera. All right, I'm pretty happy with it. At least that trip hazard is gone here, the main root cause. These bricks here, where I had to fuddle with all that, at least it kind of flushed all out, at least it's all flat. All right, so that's this one. Then, let me show you the next project. I don't know if you remember, but there was two joints here. I ended up filling those in, so I just ended up filling in uh, these two slabs. There's one here and there's one way over there and tighten in on that. So at least it's all flat now and got that filled in. That came out pretty good. So that takes care of this side walkway right here. And this is one last shot of the final slab here. Again I'm going to put in some sod here, fill in that gap so that this will all be good uh, once I get some pieces of fresh sod to put in here. Uh, the disappointing portion about this again was the salt finish. I didn't really match that finish. So the finish is slightly poor, uh, but at least the angle and everything like that is exactly what I wanted it to be. It's just I the, the finish is just a little okay, bit Okay, that rough. will conclude this cement DIY video for the two slabs and the little bit of extra stuff that I did. I hope that uh, if you're a DIYer or whatever, you got some tips out of this. I'm sure if you're an expert uh, at this, you might have been laughing at some of the stuff I was doing because it was just uh, rookie mistakes, possibly. But um, anyways, uh, just try to do, do the best I could with um, and just trying to get it done. I just wish I had done a little bit more research on that salt finish. That was the most disappointing portion of the job for me because um, I was trying to get my final product as good as possible. Oh you know working with those brick ribbons uh, because mine was a uh, I was working with existing product I think it made it a little bit tougher. Brick ribbon work in general though I think is kind of tough I'm not sure exactly how the original contractor did it, but I mean, I was looking at his lines, nice straight lines. I'm figuring that the way that they would have done that is first they would have formed out the, the cement walkway, poured that, ripped off their forms after that cured out. Then um, you have to have some type of a base for the, for the brick ribbon. Uh, yeah, take out the, the dirt so that you can pour the base for the brick ribbon then put the brick ribbon in and flush it out at that time. But I must admit the original contractor uh, did was pretty talented to make the line so straight and everything like that. Just a, it's just it's a little bit tricky when you're not an expert at it. Now that's it. Anyways, uh, check out my uh, training uh, video, uh, Ken Training, where I just do a bunch of other videos, and uh, and that's it. I'll see you later.